Uh, we're over here at a uh, friend's of mine's, uh, Mike and Brandis, and I did an uh, American Standard uh, dual fuel system install for them uh, a few years back, and we're over here doing their annual uh, uh, summer maintenance, and uh, hope you all don't mind me sharing these check and cleans with you. Uh, kind of enjoy it, so uh, just bear with me, and uh, we'll get right after it. Y'all were in here at uh, Brandon's. I like filling my coal cleaner up in the sink, man. It just don't... You get foam everywhere if you try to do it with your hose, but uh, man, I really love this sink, man. Look, it's a really deep well on it. Man, that is freaking incredible. Love it, Brenda. All right, let's walk in here and uh, pull this thermostat way, way down. Okay, y'all, this is the dual fuel American Standard thermostat. Let's get after it. Okay, y'all, we're out here at the uh, Heritage 13 uh, heat pump here. Uh, three, uh, two and a half ton unit, my bad. Uh, 410A. This is the exact same unit as I have at my home, except for my units, the last of the R22s. Um, today we're going to be looking for uh, 9 degrees uh, uh, design subcooling. So, you know, that makes it kind of a piece of cake for us to dial it in with the Testo 550s. But uh, first things first, we're going to wash this thing up real good and get her clean. Alright y'all, we had a bad storm here a while back and I'm finding like residual granules off of uh, off the uh, uh, shingles from other people's homes. Actually over at Charlie's, my other buddy, Garnet, half of his roof blew off and landed on uh, Teresa's car out there and tore it up pretty good. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's what 80 mile an hour winds will do for you. Alright y'all, let's get after it. Alright y'all, we're going to saturate this puppy real good with the coil cleaner. I really like these fine pin coils. They uh, actually clean up a lot better than the other style do. Alright y'all, I know this is probably overkill here. But we have to have our heat pumps on snow legs here in our state. I'm sure it's probably like that with every, every other state too. But anyway, as you can see these drain holes, I want them to be able to drain. So what we'll do is we'll just take our time and get these leaves out. Now you can kind of see, if you can see right here where I'm pointing at, down here with my wand, so you can actually see the holes down. Com composite, uh, these composite plastic uh, bottoms in these. Um, I'm really glad they went to these, man, because like if somebody were to leave those leaves in there like that, and let's say nobody stayed up with their maintenance, I'd say within three years that bottom's going to be rotted out of it. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Uh, well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> thanks for my rant. <laughs> I know it seems redundant, guys, but that's just the way I roll. And this is before you even slap the gauges on her. Okay, y'all, let's see here. Yada, yada, yada. Compressor motor, 11.7 RLA, rated load amps. So let's come over here to our little schematic here. Look for our common wire, which is right here. It looks like it's the black BLBK or BKBL. Man, I need my glasses, but that's what it is. And it looks like it's going right here to T2, coming off the common on the compressor. All right, and it looks like there it is right here. All right, let's see it. Let's see what we get here. Let me get everything hooked up. Okay, y'all, we're looking for. Uh, let's see. We said uh, 11.7 on our rated low amps, our compressor motor rated low amps, and we're looking for nine degrees subcooling. We zeroed the testos out. We got them fired up. Got the unit going. We just started it like two minutes ago. We're at 7.0 on our black and blue wire there, uh, our uh, common lead coming off our compressor. So that is, that, that's that's wonderful. Okay, that's, that's great. Okay, we're going to let it run for a few minutes and we're going to 
we're gonna check for nine. All right, y'all. Let me uh, straighten up a little bit, and we'll, we'll we'll get right back to her just in here a few minutes. Okay, guys. Uh, she's been running for about I don't know about 25, 30 minutes now. Uh, time enough for the ground to dry up. But however, I think it's about. Uh, let's see. It's 94 in the shade, guys. It's hot in Ferncreek. Creek. <laughs> but anyway, we took the time to shine her up, wash her down with the coal cleaner real good, inside and out. I really don't think you really have to go that uh, measure with the inside of cleaning these sp spine fins, but uh, went ahead and did it anyway. Uh, that way we could actually open up the top, and that thing was full of leaves. So, uh, you know, she's got a lot of trees back here and all. And we have had some bad weather. and But anyway, uh, we took the time to clean it out real good, polish her up, put the little elbow grease in it, take it to the next level. Uh, we've got all the openings, all the drain hole openings in the bottom of that composite plastic pan down there open. Um, we actually took a, a uh, let's see here, where is it? Come here, I'm getting hot, guys. <laughs> we took the compressor motor 11.7 rated load amps reading. I believe we were at 8, so we were well within the perimeter. Um, we're looking for uh, 9 degrees Fahrenheit design subcooling on this unit here. Uh, it's a 2.5 American Standard heat pump, dual fuel system we installed two years ago. Uh, looking for 9 degrees uh, design subcooling. Um, on this R14A American Standard, I'm. it states in the book that I'm allowed a variance of plus or minus three plus or minus three on this system so uh let's take a peek and see what we got guys like i said she's been running about a half hour or so now um right now we have a i hope y'all can see this sun's glaring um right now we have a 118.4 on our suction line pressure we have 340 on our liquid line pressure our t1 which is our suction line temperature is 55.4 our T2, which is our liquid line temperature, is 94.6. Our evaporator temperature is 40.1. Our condenser temperature is 105.1. Like I said, guys, we, we're looking for nine. We get a variance of plus minus three. And looky there, looky there. Uh, our superheat is 15.1. And our subcooling, we were looking for nine. We are at 10. Two years later, we're at 10. Okay? Um, I'm not going to split hairs on this, guys, and try to dial it into 9 and all that goofy stuff. She's perfect. I think Brenda is dialed in, guys. Now, it's going to fluctuate a little bit when that TXV is opening and closing. But like I said, I'm allowed a variance of 3. Okay? So, we're looking for 9. We're at 10.7. 10.5. 10.5. She's hanging in there, guys. All right, man, it's getting hot out here. Let me uh, get the truck loaded up, up and uh, I reckon we'll holler at you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, y'all, there's my baby. Here's that American Standard. 75,000 BTU, 95% plus furnace with the heat pump out back. There's my little green sticker on there. Rochester heat and air. Been approved. Man, terrific system. Alright, y'all. Thanks for watching. Take care.